From Maranatha Christian Academy in Brooklyn Park, we present another edition of High School Girls Basketball. It's a Saturday matinee featuring one of the most intense and historic rivalries in girls basketball. The Maranatha Christian Academy Mustangs at 14 and three host the Mountain Iron Buell Rangers at 20 and one. Maranatha, the number three team in class 2A, Mountain Iron Buell, the number two team in class A. Greetings everyone, I'm Mike Pete and thank you for joining us. This has been one of the most storied rivalries over the last several years. Mountain Iron Buell and Maranatha over their last eight meetings, four and four, the last two years, they've met twice, once in the regular season and once in the state tournament round. That will not be the case this year with Maranatha moving up to 2A, Mountain Iron Buell staying in Class A, so this will be the only fireworks display between these two teams. But it's a friendly rivalry. There aren't a lot of secrets between the two coaches. They know each other, and both noted the amusement of this buildup, how big this rivalry has evolved considering the 200 mile separation between the two schools. Maranatha Christian Academy making home in Class 2A, doing just as well as they had been in Class A. They are running through the conference. You may have heard that they recently picked up their 100th consecutive victory in the MCAA. Leading the way this year are a pair of seniors on the early list of frontrunners for Miss Basketball. Jacqueline Jarnett, who is committed to Monmouth, where she'll follow her sister Elena. A walking double-double. She has a double-double in every game this season. She's also 74 points away from crossing the 2,000 mark, which would also match her sister's accolade from two years ago. Kylie Post also on the short list, having a strong year. A big pickup they got through transfer was Keishana Barth Lofton. She came from Minnehaha following the explosion. There were some after effects. Just didn't feel comfortable returning there. Perfectly understandable. She found a home in Maranatha and she has given the Mustangs a much needed boost down low. She's a guard, but she is a double-double threat almost every game. Mountain Iron Buell, they haven't won state even though they've qualified to the Class A bracket for the last seven years, but they have produced a cavalcade of talented athletes. They said goodbye to Maya Buffetta and Chelsea Mason from a couple of years ago after a story career for the two of them. That's all right, at Mountain Iron Buell, they simply reload. This year, they're led by the likes of Madison Overby, who's among the state leaders in three-point field goals, and Mary Burke, who leads the state in steals, third in the state in scoring. This is a team not afraid to put up big numbers and they've been doing that for many, many years. The one thing that hasn't come their way is a Class A state championship. And as always, they have a good chance. Lyle Pacelli, Goodhue are in the thick of it, but uh, this is a team you can never count out. We'll have the starting lineups in a moment. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. So ladies and gentlemen, before we introduce the starting lineups, would you please rise as we open up with a word of prayer and then remain standing and even join in singing if they'd like to as we honor America by playing our national anthem. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we live in a country that we can still pray. We appreciate that. We thank you for these young ladies. I pray, God, that you would help them to play to the very best of their abilities. Keep them safe. Keep them free from injury. Help us as fans to be just that, to be fanatic for our kids, to be positive and not negative. Pray that you bless the referees too. Help them to see things as they are, and not just as they appear. We ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Please remain standing. <laughs>
And with the introductory gestures out of the way, let's take a look at the starting five. For the visiting Mountain Iron Bill Rangers, it's Mary Burke, number two, the senior forward. Macy Savala, number three, the junior guard. Allie Nagan, number 11, the junior guard. Madison Overby, number 13, the junior guard. And Madison Bennett, number 23, the junior center. Maranatha will start Jacqueline Jarnett, number one, the senior forward. Kylie Post, number 10, the senior guard. Brianna Smestad, number 21, the junior guard. Macy Smith, number 23, the freshman guard. And Keishana Barth Lofton, number 25, the junior guard. Maranatha busting out their red alternates, which they introduced last year. And all the Maranatha starters getting nicknames here. Chris Bierman in his fifth season leading the Mustangs. He has been to the state tournament every year, has yet to win one. He finished second a couple of times, including 2016 when he had a memorable semifinal duel against Mountain Iron Buell. Jasmine Thompson got the game winner in overtime. Unfortunately, Jasmine Thompson, not playing this year, suffered an injury, ACL tear, and fall league, and her athletic career is done as far as high school is concerned. Really unfortunate, but she's here supporting the team and will continue to do so as the season moves along. Mountain Iron Buell and Maranatha, neither team afraid to put up points. Mountain Iron Buell averaging 79.6, Maranatha averaging 77.4, both far and away the highest figures in their sections. It wouldn't be surprise me if we have another shootout in the latest chapter of this rivalry, a rivalry that is going in its sixth year now. Started in 2012, and they played each other Every year ever since, we're underway. MIB wearing the white, Maranatha wearing the red. Going up, missing as Mary Burke gets her own rebound and cleans up her own mess. Mary Burke gets us started. Jacqueline Jarnett speeds down the other end and she is now 72 away from 2000. Nagin with a little pump fake. Burke thought about it. Hard to get around Jarnett though. Ball is deflected and it will stay with the Rangers. Mary Burke averaging 26 and a half points, nine and a half rebounds a game. So another double-double threat. And she's wasting little time making a presence known. Mountain Iron Buell up in the Iron Range area. Kylie Post floats it in. Kylie Post, realistically a dark horse to get missed basketball, but a dynamic score off the dribble, in the words of Chris Bierman. Savala, bounce pass. MIB kicks it back out. We're tied at four in the early going. Savala blocked from behind by Smestad. Jacqueline Jarnett the middle of the Jarnett sisters. They have a seventh grader by the name of Chloe and Smestad missed everything on the elbow, Jay. They have a seventh grader by the name of Chloe who has played some varsity minutes this year and expected to be a fixture on this Maranatha team for years to come. Jacqueline, of course, the senior. And she and Elena A strong part of this program. She's going to get hit with a foul, though. And that will send Mary Burke to the line. Mary Burke, five 30-point games this year. <laughs> Missed the front end. Wait a minute. Didn't miss the front end. Mary Burke has officially crossed 2,000 career points. So Jeff Buffetta was telling me she was close to two. 
So Mary Burke didn't take long to get a milestone. And she joins the likes of Chelsea Mason. Who scored 3,000, I believe, at Mount Aaron Buell. And it's what an honor. And props to the Maranatha staff for stopping the game so that Mary Burke could get the recognition she deserves. So Mary Burke officially joins the 2,000 point club. And maybe she was jinxed. <laughs> So now that's out of the way, let's get back to basketball. Jacqueline Jarnett's not going to join her today. Smestad, step back three, isn't there. Rebound, Madison Bennett. Nagan, out to Burke. Burke has scored every point for the Rangers thus far. Cutting her way inside, unable to get the bounce with Savala. Rebound, Jarnett. Barth Lofton in transition. She can't put it down. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> That's a traveling violation on the Rangers. And I can't stop laughing because there were two Rangers who were battling for possession. And so, uh, well, at least there's no question that they like to go after it. Baron Athlet throws it away, so it's a moot point. I've never seen that before. Two players on the same team fighting for the rebound. Abe, did that ever happen at Kennedy? No, that never did. <laughs> oh, Mountain Iron Beal's going to have a blooper reel. <laughs> a blooper to add to the season highlight reel. That was great. Not great for efficiency, but it's just great to see two players go after it like that. Uh, Macy Smith, uh, she draws the blocking foul. She'll shoot two. Capable of playing the one through four, has improved her defense over a year ago. And this team as a whole, Chris Beerman told me, they're younger but deeper. One thing they haven't done is win a state title. And in Class 2A, they're going to, instead of contending with the likes of Mountain Iron Buell and Goodhue, Lyle Pacelli having a strong year, now they're going to have to... Face the likes of DGF, Sox Center, Holy Families in the top 10, Minnehaha is a perennial. So some new competition. Maranatha not afraid of playing top level opponents anyway. They had a match last month with Wyzetta, 79-70 loss, but that was a close one. Rangers fired the three, Savala missed everything. Trying to get the put back down low. Not Nine Buell can't save it. Maranatha also continuing their series with Holy Angels. That was an 82-72 loss. Lost to a 3A school in Fergus Falls. They've run over MCAA competition, and we spoke of the changes in class for Maranatha. In a couple of years, they will no longer be in the MCAA. New conference is forming called the Skyline. It will launch in 2019 a few of the mcaa schools will join them concordia academy will follow as well mary burke floats it in seven to five mary burke is leading the mustangs by herself marinatha blows a fast break opportunity down low they'll try again missing the baseline jay is number 15, Kayla Joe Davis, and there's a foul. And that will send Davis to the line. Foul will go against Bennett, her first. And this is a team not afraid of long road trips. Well, last couple of years, they would make the trek 200 miles north to play Mountain Iron Buell. You may recall the game last year that we did at Lyle Pacelli in Austin. Kayla Joe Davis knocks down both free throws. Mountain Iron Buell, two on one. Nice bounce pass. That is what you call a transition play. Madison Bennett, the beneficiary. It's nine to seven. Smestad left alone. Swish. And she steals the inbound feed. 
Jacqueline Jarnan banks in the left-handed floater. So five different Maranatha players have scored. It's 11 to nine. One thing's for sure, neither team is afraid of those long skip passes. Some coaches squeam at that. And Madison Overby goes coast to coast. We're tied at 11. And at 14.05, a quick start to this one. Kylie Post sees a lane and one. Abe, he's already speechless and we're only four minutes in. Kylie Post averaging 15 points a game, 7.6 rebounds, four and a half steals. Post among the state leaders in the steals bracket. Missed the free throw though. Maranatha with another steal. That's gonna be a charge. Post barreled into her defender. That was Mary Burke taking the fall. Mountain Iron Buell, an independent school. They have no conference affiliation. So they get the freedom to create their own rivalries. And here's a symbol of their propensity for points. We mentioned they averaged 79 a game. They broke the century mark once this year on January 8th, a 102-72 win over International Falls. Their one loss this year came against Rozo, 90 to 86, and we're gonna have a stoppage in play. Mary Burke getting checked out. Not sure what the stoppage is for. Well, that gives Abe time to take a snapshot. Oh, that's nice. I need a phone like that. I might use that as my cover photo. Where was I? MIB, yes. They have not scored fewer than 59 points in a game this year. That came against Big Fork. And I'm wondering... Did they call a technical here? It appears that way. They're gonna bring Smestad out to the line, it, it's, it looks like. So Mont Nyabil made a substitution for Patia Hayes, and I'm wondering if it was a jersey number or something else, so yeah, they're gonna have a technical. So Smith-Stab will shoot free throws and then Mountain Iron Buell should get possession here because of the charge on post. So an illegal substitution, that's a bench technical. Nobody is hit with a foul. As you know, you have to submit your rosters in full before the game starts. And so we see Maya Gagno and Patia Hayes. And I'm guessing one of those two weren't in the roster entering the game. So Maranatha actually did take over the ball as a result of the technical. So Kylie Post is hit with a foul, but Maranatha was the one who got points out of it. But we have a long way to go. 15 to 11 is our score. Gagno chases it down. Hayes, missed the layup. Maranatha looking to run. They throw it away. And a timeout will be called with 13.21 left in the first half. It's MIB who calls it. It's a fast one, fast start to this. 15 to 11 our score. Desiree Ware, number 24, an eighth grader, ability to slash and get to the basket. Her father is the coach of the boys team, James Ware.
30 second timeout. Now we're back to action. You see Maranatha not afraid to execute that press and they never have been. No matter who wears a Maranatha uniform, but a blocking foul will be called on Smestad. Whether it was Elena Jarnett, Lexi Lee, if you go back a few years, Onye Osiminum, part of the back-to-back -back state titles. Elise Moore, who's now playing at John Hopkins. Graduated valedictorian. I'm sure she's watching, wanted to give her a plug. Maranatha on the run, Kylie Post with the finish. Give the dime to Jacqueline Jarnett. And Jarnett averages 3.6 a game. She and Post evenly split in the assist category. Jarnett with the block. Nobody from Maranatha caught up to it though, so Rangers catch a break. Mary Burke keeping the Rangers around. She's got nine. Jarnett, bounce pass to Davis. Yes. Jacqueline Jarnett racking up dimes and taking names. Hasn't recorded a triple-double this year, but she might get there today. Mount Naren Beal throws it away. Savala has to pick it up to keep Montgomery from turning it into a fast break deuce. Sophia Montgomery, you know her as one of my longtime fans. Signed an autograph for her traveling team and she never forgot my face. Big Lynx fan as you can imagine. And I'm sure she was really happy when they won the state, or not the state, the WNBA championship last year. I know this guy was. No matter how many times I give you flack about Kennedy or the Vikings, you always have the links to go on. Davis missing a couple of point blank shots. Dead ball rebound to the Rangers. You don't see that often. Unfortunate miscue for the Rangers. Post. Missed it there. Allie Nagan with the board. Rangers on the run. Madison Bennett with the finish. Bennett one of four double digit scores for the Rangers. And with the pace these two teams play, no lead is going to be safe. Another steal. Post pulls up from 13, gets the friendly bounce. Maranatha calls timeout. 21-15, picked up a little bit of momentum, but their defense not fooling around. Kylie Post heading to Minnesota Crookston. And Jeff Buffetta expressing his displeasure over the last couple of possessions. This is a small gym, so sound carries around here. Unlike Abe's uh, home turf at Kennedy, where there's it, the gym's a little bigger, so <laughs> gym's just a little bit bigger or even at Stillwater. But this is kind of a boxy, well, folks used to call it cracker box in the old days because it's not much bigger than one. As you know, Maranatha, oh, unfortunate, that's not gonna leave Jeff Lafetta happy. And you can see he's got the Picard face palm. Not the sequence you want on an ATO play. But Maranatha's defense, that's what they do. If they can get after it, they like to attack. And we'd like to welcome you to this game of hot potato.
The kick out. Going up. Savala can't put it down. Another transition look for the Mustangs. Desiree Ware with the score. Ware averages 6.6. Savala with the dime, Nagan with the bucket. Rangers needed that one. Ware sees a lane, attacks and scores. Bierman wasn't kidding when he said this eighth grader can slash away to the bucket. 25-17, Mustangs stepping on the gas. But like we said, with the pace seeds two teams play, we have a long way to go. No lead is safe, at least in the first half. Burke in trouble. Throws it away. Kylie Post, the dish to Jarnett, yes. Timeout, Mountain Iron Buell, they have three left. The Mustangs on a huge run. I can't imagine what Jeff Buffetta is saying now. The ATO sequence, they turn it over. And since then, the Mustangs have built the lead to 10. <laughs> it's giving me an idea of what the huddle is like right now. But these are two teams who are no strangers to adversity. These are coaches who are friendly with one another. <laughs> Ran into both of them beforehand. And let's just say they both know <laughs> each other's starters it's been such a long series They've, these two have met each other so often that there aren't any secrets it's just a matter of execution and that's what makes this rivalry fun they love playing each other and Jeff told me uh, for a school that's 200 miles away said it's crazy to think that this is our most intense rivalry of the year but when you look at the postseason meetings the regular season meetings it's hard to argue against that notion not many schools have that kind of rivalry where you see each other twice a year, once with state implications. Macy Savala drains the runner after getting a screen. Post, out to where? A good bucket for the Rangers. Post, out to Barth Lofton, and she lost it. Lost her dribble. This is why we say no lead is safe because Mountain Iron Buell can reel this in in a hurry. Long two isn't there for Bennett. Post with the board. Looking for Barth Lofton in transition. And she didn't quite collect it in time. This is a track meet. I might get tired watching this. Three. That rims out. But the high carom is tipped to Savala. Another chance for the Rangers. Mary Burke. Out to Nagan. She fires. No good. No foul called. Mustangs ball. Well, we're running at 100 miles an hour. Smestad goes down, Montgomery with the rejection, denying Macy Savala. Savala, one of the double-digit scores. Nagan, Overby, and Burke are the others for the Rangers. Mary Burke, haven't heard from her in a while. The kick out to Savala, she passes up a three. Almost threw it away. Burke 
had nowhere to go, so she bounced it off Barth Lofton to maintain possession for the Rangers. Savala drives, no good. Montgomery with the rebound. A little bit of confusion there, but Macy Smith recovers. Can't convert the layup. Bearing that, the, they've been stuck for a while. One thing's for sure, this game doesn't need a shot clock. I don't know if we'll get to 100 today. But both teams getting after it. Going to the line is Allie Nagan. Allie averaging 13 points a game, 4.8 rebounds, 3.2 assists. Sixty-four percent free throw shooter. Knocks them both down here. And the Rangers. Slowly cutting into this deficit. They've got it back down to six. Barth Lofton, nice, the high-low play. Smestad with the dime, and Barth Lofton gets on the board. Seven Mustangs have scored. Mary Burke, the kick out. Long two, doesn't fall for number 21. That is Devin Dahl. Davis tried to go high-low to Smestad. She couldn't control it. The Mount Iron Buell settling down after they trail by 10. Mary Burke off the screen, missed the three. Rebound Jarnett. Kayla Jo Davis, she walked. She was indecisive. She seems a little bewildered at the call, but she wasn't quite sure whether to take it herself or to dish it to Barth Lofton, and it didn't work out. Not a telegraphed or a scripted pass there, but Burke is open for three. Maranatha gonna go fast break again. Kylie Pulse will shoot two. They've been on a scoring drought of about three and a half minutes, so we'll see if this breaks it. Riley Post missing the front end there. On our tally, Post, not the strongest free throw shooter out there, 41%. And she blanks. So Maranatha's drought continues. And we have a foul on Kayla Jo Davis. She goes by KJ, Kayla Joe, KJ. One way or another, very strong athlete. Here's Overby. Overby with just one bucket. We haven't seen her get open for a three yet. We know she can launch him. Savala. Goes up. Davis got a piece of it. Burke, three ball. Still hasn't knocked down a triple. Offensive rebound and breaking free is Nagan. So the Rangers get the second chance bucket. 
Uh, Nari Buell read the pass. They get the steal. Burke will wait for help. Overby was looking for that three there. Nagin will fire and missed everything. And she was fouled by Jacqueline Jarnett. So two free throw, three free throws, I should say, coming for Allie Nagin. Nagin, a 39% three-point shooter. Burke and Overby also hovering around that 40% mark. Nagin doing a fine job from the line. That was three free throws aimed. He wasn't quite sure. But I am sure of this. Nagin knocks down all three, and what was a 10-point deficit is down to three. Ware throws it away right into the hands of Burke. Gagno almost lost control. Savala kicks back out. Oh, looking for the backdoor cut. Burke couldn't put it down. Hosses for the rebound and scores. Mary Burke up to 11. What did I tell you? No lead is safe. That last foul was the second on Jarnett. Long skip. Smestad's going to cut her way in and float it in. And that ends the scoring drought for the Mustangs. They've been in a, in a bit of a rut for a while. Overby looking inside. And that's going to be a foul on Davis. Mary Burke will shoot free throws with Maranatha in the penalty. That will be the second charge to KJ. Mary Burke, 85% free throw shooter, 60% field goal shooter. When you look at two pointers, highly accurate athlete and again, one of many in a long line of superb athletes in the Iron Range, Mountain Iron Buell. Their only loss was to the defending champions in Class 2A in Rozo. Burke splits, makes it a two-point game. Long skip to Jarnett, finds Barth Lofton down low. Jacqueline Jarnett. A triple-double may not be out of the question. Barth Lofton up to four. Nagin, Barth Lofton played good defense. Nagin couldn't break free. Jarnett, the kick out. Three on the way. That stays in play. Battle for the rebound. That's going to be a tie out. Maranatha with the arrow. 33 29, 258 left in the first half. Macy Smith out to post. Smestad finds Barth Lofton, pulls the spin move and scores. Barth Lofton, we noted, right at home here at Maranatha, close to a double-double. Averaging 9.9 .9 points. Mountain Iron Buell finally knocks down a three. Mary Burke, you knew it was only a matter of time. She shoots 37%. You can't contain three-point shooters for long. They'll find a way. Jacqueline Jarnett drains the runner. She's up to eight. Mountain Iron Buell. Good court vision and Madison Bennett, the beneficiary. Excellent response. Smestad for three. Missed everything, but the high carom goes to post. 
Finds Barth, Lofton. And hooks her up on the shovel pass. Barth Lofton up to eight. We've got three eights for the Mustangs. Jarnett Post and Barth Lofton, 39-34. Three, bullseye. Savala scores. All five starters for the Rangers have scored. Barth Lofton weaves through. Barth Lofton feeling it. The season high is 18. Savala to the hole, no good. But it's important to have a trailer, Barth Lofton. Says not in my house, didn't get the block but caused the deflection. Jarnett didn't have a great angle there, less than a minute. Savala again on Barth Lofton. Keishana says get out of here. Keishana, Barth Lofton. We saw glimpses of her potential at Minnehaha. Making a name for herself at Maranatha. Burke missing the three-pointer, but Smith could not control the rebound. Rangers will keep it, 42.1. Overby through the hole and draws the blocking foul there on Desiree Ware. Madison Overby. Averaging 12.4 a game, known for her three-point shooting. Among the state leaders had 53 pointers entering today's game. She's a 55% free throw shooter. The foul was the first on Desiree Ware. Thirty seconds. Maranatha throws it away. Mary Burke off to the races. That boards up to seventeen. It's a one-point game. Kylie Post almost threw it away again. Barth Lofton missed it. Goes back up. Leaves it soft again. Ware draws the foul. Will shoot two. Barth Lofton had the right idea. You got to put a little more oomph in it, though. You'll see a lot of players clutch it. She went back up, but uh, left it soft. That's all right, though. Ware was there, and that's why we say it's important to have a trailer. Desiree Ware, averaging 6.6 .6 a game. Season high 14. Another young gun on this Maranatha squad. And a quick defensive substitution, Elena Erickson for the Mustangs. I presume this is to prevent any of Maranatha's big names from picking up a costly third foul. Ware knocks down both free throws. Good if it goes, bullseye! Maya Gagno sinks the three to end the first half. And it's only fitting that after 18 minutes, we end the way we started, tied at 43. The Mustangs built a 10-point lead, but as we said, no lead is safe in this series. And with how quickly these two teams play the ball. What a first half. Abe at a loss for words. He's wanting to know where the defense is in the paint. Well, this is a matchup where you can throw defense out the window. <laughs> uh, we'll take a break so we can collect ourselves because we need to after a first half of that caliber. We're tied at 43. This is high school girls basketball. And we rejoin you at Maranatha Christian Academy. It 
enclosed in the campus of Living Word Christian Church here in Brooklyn Park. Mike Pete and all by myself, talking to myself. Second half coming up between Mountain Iron Buell and Maranatha, the latest chapter in the ongoing rivalry. First half tied at 43. Both coaches feel this is the strongest rivalry these schools have, and that first half was an indication. Mary Burke with 17 points, and she becomes the latest Mountain Iron Buell player to join the 2000 Point Cup Club. Congratulations on that achievement. Ali Nagan has nine. Madison Bennett has six. Maranatha, Keishana Barth Lofton leads with 10. Kylie Post and Jacqueline Jarnett have eight each. Brianna Smestad and Desiree Ware have six. Jacqueline Jarnett, as we noted, closing in on 2,000 points. She is 66 away, so she's not going to join Mary Burke today in the 2,000-point club, but both exceptional athletes. For Mary Burke, she's the latest in a long line of them at Mountain Iron Buell, and for Jacqueline Jarnett, the same. If you remember, her sister, the state record holder for career assists. Jarnett, by the way, also closing in on 1,500 career rebounds. The Jarnets may not have the state tournament hardware like some other teams, but they've been fun to watch over the years. Going to be sad to see the younger Jarnett go, but it happens sometimes. Not Naren Buell gets the turnover. Burke, or I should say that's Savala. Bennett was fouled underneath. Mountain Iron Buell at 20 and one. Maranatha, 14 and three. They've won their last nine. They have not lost since the Wyzetta game a month ago. And we had a stoppage in play. One of the officials having a chat with Chris Bjorman in his fifth year at Maranatha. Jeff Buffetta in his 18th at Mountain Iron Buell. Rangers have made state seven years in a row, have yet to win. Maranatha, eight in a row, jump ball, Mustangs with the arrow. They won two, 2011 and 2012. And they're running out of space for banners here. Kylie Post draws the foul to shoot two. She missed her last two trips. Post heading to Minnesota Crookston. And she recently joined the 1,000 point club. Like we said, she would be a dark horse to be among the finalists for Miss Basketball, but she got consideration and that's good for something. Jacqueline Jarnett the other. Jarnett I think has a better shot of making the list of finalists, but there's more to the sport than awards and points, as I've stated many times before. Mary Burke draws a foul on Barth Lofton. And that will send her back to the line. Mary Burke, two of three. As we noted, 85% free throw shooter. Five times this year she's crossed 37 and a boatload of double doubles. Not as many as Jacqueline Jarnett, but I don't think anyone's going to knock her talents. Gives Mountain Iron Buell the first lead in a while. Rangers 9 of 11 from the charity stripe. And now they're bringing the pressure defense up. Mary Burke blocking Jarnett. And with Mountain Iron Beal, I suppose their talent is contagious. You know, when you have folks like Chelsea Mason and Maya Buffetta from last year. Jacqueline Jarnett gets the turnaround to fall. She's up to 10. Overby almost lost it. 
Savala to Bennett, and that's going to be the second on Keishana Barthlofton. Madison Bennett, 56% free throw shooter. More of a threat down low, doesn't go outside that often. And she splits. Jarnett with the board. Barth Lofton through the hole and that was ruled a deflection. Post. No good. Jarnett with the board. Yes. Well, Jacqueline Jarnett going to have a double-double for sure. Maybe a triple-double today. She has yet to accumulate one this year. Barth Lofton takes the rebound with authority, but left the outlet pass a little low. Throws it away as a result. Burke out to Bennett. Burke for three. Off the heel. Rebound goes to Macy Smith. Is she going to go for it? No good. Blocked by the Rangers. And that was a late whistle. And it would be unfortunate there if you're the Mustangs because I think Smestad, who was the trailer, could have had a layup otherwise. Jarnett, three ball, missed everything. And Maranatha throws it away. Forty-eight, forty-six, fifteen 15 minutes to go. Post with the steal. Here she comes. Post goes all the way. Burke, oh, that was close. Barth Lofton could have picked up her third foul there. Fortunately, she didn't. If you're a Maranatha fan, that was close. I saw contact, but we play on. And that's going to be a foul on Burke. Just the second on Mary Burke. Rangers, nobody in serious foul trouble yet. Mustangs do play an aggressive style of defense, so that's why you need depth, and they've got plenty of it. Mary Burke with the steal and score. Mary Burke gets 21. Where? They will call the blocking foul. Savalad did not get set up in time. Desiree Ware. Back to the line. No shortage of highlights today. Ware missing the front end. will settle for a split. Maranatha, 9 of 15. Mountain Iron Buell, 10 of 13 from the line. 
Here comes Savalage. Drives is short. Barth Lofton with the rebound. Where can she catch up to it? No. Overby brings the ball up for the Rangers. There's Hayes. Nagin, she walked. Jacqueline Jarnett checking her elbow, making sure she didn't suffer any lacerations. Yeah, looks like the we got a bit of a draft up here. Jarnett. Cuts inside. Nagin got a piece of it. Mary Burke drives and scores. It's Mary Burke Day if you're about Nyron Buell today. 23 points. The rest of the team is 27. But doesn't matter how you get them. Jacqueline Jarnett leaned in a little too much. And Nagin lost her balance going for the board. It will stay with Maranatha. If you're wondering about Jacqueline Jarnett and her recruiting by Monmouth, though they went for her just as hard as they did with Elena. There was no package deal, no, no favors. There were a few other schools taking a look at Jacqueline, but it's hard to pass up the chance to play with your sister. Brianna Smestad collects her own miss and takes it to the rim. Nagin breaks free, goes up and in. 53-52. Jarnett through the hole, floats it in this time. Showing her finger roll, over B with the three, no good. And Rangers can't save it. Jarnett, the outlet to where? No! Jump ball, Rangers with the arrow. We already have three double-digit scores for the Mustangs. In case you're wondering, Maranatha, they scored 90 once, a 90 to 40 win over Trinity. Savala, pump fakes the three, missed the drive, and another jump. Mustangs with the arrow that time. Montgomery back on the floor for the Mustangs. Well, the Montgomerys from Elk River. Talked about the commute they had to make in the snow. You know, not as bad as the 10 incher that hit most of the Southeast Metro, but it's not easy to drive through snow. Montgomery throws it away. Abe looks a little deflated. Eleven forty-five remains. Largest lead for either team has been ten. It's been close for most of it. Gagno, that three-pointer to beat the buzzer, her only basket thus far. And that will stay with the Rangers. Mountain Iron Buell slowing it down a little bit. And it may be a response either to fatigue or the fact that Maranatha wants to make it a track meet. Bennett missing the floater. This is what I mean. They like to go in transition, and that's why. Even if you don't make the bucket, you can at least get to the line. Uh, 
Free throws coming for Desiree Ware. She's three of four. Seven off the bench. As we noted, her season high is 14, and something tells me she's going to be a focal point for this Maranatha program. Once folks like Jacqueline Jarden and Kylie Post pick up their diplomas. Ware, five of six. Maranatha builds their lead to five. Gagnon has to get rid of it, finds Burke. She creates and draws the foul. That will go against Davis, that will be her third. If nothing else, this is giving both teams a chance to collect themselves here, get a breather or two. Burke missing the front end. She has struggled a little bit today from the free throw line. Max down the second. That puts her up to 24. Smith to post. Jarnett is fouled. Both teams had two to give. Jarnett and Burke, they both share a quick first step. As we've seen, Jarnett and Burke spin their way out of trouble. Davis fade away. That's a tough shot. Not Iron Buell can't save it. Kylie Post through the hole and gets the friendly bounce. She's up to 13. Balanced scoring from Maranatha, not Iron Buell. A lot of it has come from Burke. But as we said, it still doesn't feel like this one is over. Even though the Mustangs are up by six, they can reel it in in a hurry, and that's the last foul to give for the Mustangs. Ali Nagan gets back up. Took a hard hit. Trying to walk it off. She's having trouble. Limping off to the bench. We hope she's all right. In her place is Lauren Mackey. Nagan with 11 points, giving the Rangers a big source of scoring. Rangers swept the season series between the two a year ago winning the regular season meeting and the Class A state semifinal. Burke, what a move! Used her pivot foot, had nowhere to go and found a lane anyway. A shooting lane that is. Post drives the kick out to Davis. She gets a friendly bounce. Savala attacks, too strong. Rebound will go to Maranatha. And here comes Barth Lofton. Davis in trouble. 
Barth Lofton had a strong first half. Look at her attack. Barth Lofton penetrates, and she's up to 12. Mackey out to Overby. Oh, the Rangers could certainly use her three-point shooting, but the Mustangs have been doing a good job keeping her away. Timeout is called. Maya Gellerstedt with the score. Don't think we'll get to three, or 300, <laughs> 100, 300, oh, that would maybe in a video game, but. Uh, but take a look at this with Maranatha. Jacqueline Jarnett with 14, Kylie Post with 13, Keishana Barth Lofton with 12. They have 15 bench points. Granted, it's only come from two players, but if you're the Mustangs, you'll take it. Mountain Iron Buell, just five bench points. And outside of Mary Burke, they've had difficulty getting others involved. Again, Overby, known for her three-point shooting, Maranatha has kept it away. Allie Nagan had 11, but she had the knee injury. I'm not sure if she'll return. That being said, it's only a six-point game. And the Rangers were able to come back from 10 down to tie it at halftime. Rangers will return to the Metro on February 23rd when they play Heritage Christian. As we noted, being an independent school, Mountain Iron Buell, Grand Rapids, it means you rack up a lot more miles because you don't have any conference games. But as I noted last year with Don Ackerman, the benefit is you get to form your own rivalries. And if something doesn't go the way you like, you can change it up. Smith draws contact. Last foul to give for the Rangers with 8-12 left. Now Maranatha, they've been stuck at the third spot in Class 2A for a while, but you know, without the, with the geographic distance for Sox Center, DGF, and some other schools, it's hard to really get a good grasp of who's number one. But you know Sox Center, they're always in the thick of it. They seem to be the 2A bridesmaids. Where for three, missed everything. Rebound Burke, and this is what we talk about. Uh, the Rangers, are still in this. And you see where they are playing close on Overby, not giving her any space at the three-point line. Allie Nagan back on the floor, draws the foul on Barth Lofton. That will be her third. Well, good to see Nagan, who has been clutch on the free throw line, back out there. But she's gonna feel it, I think, after this one. And this is why depth is important. As we noted, the Rangers have four double-digit scores, and even though Savala and Nagan, or I should say Savala and Overby, have struggled to find the score column today, Nagan has stepped up, especially from the line. Knocks down both, making a four-point game. Kylie Post drives and scores. We've seen that a few times today. Post with 15. Super Bowl may be in Minneapolis, but we've got a super rivalry unfolding in what looks to be another high-intensity chapter. Savala, through traffic, draws the foul. Both teams out of fouls to give. And depending on who it's on, it's on Smestad, that is her third. So Smestad with three and Barth Lofton with three. Now this is where the fouls start to enter your calculations. Savala, this is her first trip to the free throw line, just two field goals. 
She averages 11 a game. Has to settle for a split here. Post. Out to Jarnett. For three. No good. Rebound is won by Overby. Five point game. Gagno. Short on the three. Burke with the rebound. Nagan. Step back. Short again. Maranatha looking to run. Where? Gets a friendly roll. Desiree Ware with 11 off the bench. Timeout, Maranatha, they lead 67-60. Looking to end a 12-game winning streak for the Rangers. Maranatha, they've got one more conference game with Pax, and then they'll host Mideota. In a couple of weeks, they're gonna have their marathon week because they're still in the NCAA. The Minnesota Christian Athletic Association has their own conference tournament. But as we noted, the Mustangs going through conference play without much difficulty. Closest margin was against Southwest Christian when they won by 11. And it looks like the snow has tapered off. So maybe the commute home will be a little easier. Desiree Ware, though, what? I'm impressed by this eighth grader. She's not playing like it. Savala found just enough space down low to score the layup. Rangers needed that one. Jarnett saw a lane and will get free throws out of it. Jacqueline Jarnett closing in on 2,000 points, 1,500 rebounds, can play virtually any position. She's more of the introverted uh, sister between her and Elena. The two play together for a couple of years. Elena, maybe a little more outgoing, but they both tremendous athletes. Both are tremendous athletes, and it's going to be fun to see those sisters play again as teammates for a couple more years. And Jarnett misses both free throws. Opportunity for the Rangers, who only trail by five. Gagno! Ah, she bobbled the pass. She was right there. She was right there. Oh, boy. Jarnett. That's going to be a charge. Ali Nagan with the defensive stop. That will be the third on Jarnett, so three players have three fouls for the Mustangs. Although with time winding down, it will become less of an issue. Something to keep in mind though, should we have overtime? Overby to Burke. I think Barth Lofton was able to get a deflection on it. Ware using her speed again. And the jump is called. So the Rangers get another stop on the fast break. Mary Burke through the lane and in. Jarnett cuts through Burke. She won't be fooled this time. A little misdirection for you. Burke again. That's the fourth on Barth Lofton. Free throws for Mary Burke, who has 28. But 
Free throws have been a bit problematic for her today. Well, you know how the jinx works. You've mentioned someone's free throw numbers and that player sometimes struggles. So Burke has to settle for another split. That does make it a four point game. Well, it's a shame that we won't get to see these two play in state again. Those rivalries games, those state tournament matchups always produce excitement. Smestad, that would have been a huge three-pointer. But the Mustangs will hang on to it with four and a half to play because Overby could not stay in bounds. No fault of hers, just ran out of real estate. But this is what we call the danger zone in basketball. You're not in position to kill the clock per se. But you want to play smart. And that's smart. Post with the dime. Davis with another mid-range J. Overby still not able to get open from three-point range. Tries to go inside, comes up empty. Do Kayla Joe Davis kicks back out. Maranatha, they don't need to force it. They lead by six. Both teams in the bonus. Smestad, late foul called. Brianna Smestad transferred from Centennial. Her stepfather is the head coach of the Rogers Royals. Missed the first few games of the year with a strained foot. Sprained foot, I should say. Missed a couple of games as a result. But Chris Bierman said her scoring is getting back to where it usually is. She'll go out. Her free throw's making an eight-point game, and now this is where the pressure starts to rise if you're Mountain Iron Buell. How do you counter it? Ganyo kicks back out. Burke, what a move. <laughs> Juke jarred it. And with that, she has her sixth 30 point game this year. Kayla Joe Davis comes up short. Battle for the rebound. Goes to the Rangers. That's what they needed. They got their stop. Can they do something with it? Savala can't run it in. Didn't look like she had full control of it. Mustangs again will back off. They don't need to force it. Montgomery on the drive. Not known for her offense, coughs it up. Burke and Savala got their way out of a jam on the near side. Nagan, deep three, is there! Allie Nagan, the savior for Mountain Iron Buell today. Mary Burke will get a lot of credit for passing 2,000 and adding another 30 point game to her vaunted totals, but Allie Nagan, with that three, she goes up to 16. It's her first three pointer of the game and it makes it a one possession game. Now, both teams as we noted in the penalty. Maranatha with nine fouls, so the Rangers in the double bonus. Mountain Iron Buell with eight. Rangers call timeout. We noted in the first half a lot of three point sharpshooters for the Rangers, Allie Nagan shooting just under 40%, 39 to 98 entering this game. So even though Overby is among the state leaders, the Rangers, as usual, have a lot of ways which way 
to beat you. Now, we noted the classification for Maranatha pushing them up to 2A, so it will deny another state tournament matchup with these two. But another note is a Mountain Iron Bills section. The Rangers are in the section 7, subsection 2. Cromwell White moved back to 7A. Those two met earlier in the year. Rangers won that one 75-64. So Cromwell may have some difficulty. If they want to get back to state themselves, they're going to have to end one of the longest streaks in the state. Less than two minutes to go. Jacqueline Jarnett, baseline drive. She'll go to the line, although she missed her last two. Gets that one to fall. Well, from the looks of it, we'll see what happens between now and then, but it's looking more and more like that 2,000 point milestone will be crossed when Maranatha hosts Como Park a week from Monday. Makes it a two possession game. 130 remains. Gagno. The kick out. Savala, deep three. No good. That might be enough. Mustangs. Mustangs don't need to do anything. And they're just going to hang on to it. And now Martin Iron Beale has to play foul and chase. But. That's the player you want at the line for that situation. Just a second on Savala. Kylie Post missed the front end. As we noted, Post not adept at the free throw line. This is both. Rangers, they need a score and they need a quick. Overby, you see Post guarding her closely. Nowhere to go. Free throws coming for Smestad, who's had a little more success there. Over the last eight meetings, it was an even split. And this was certainly worth the price of admission, though, for those who made the trek out here. Smesta knocks down both free throws. That should be enough. With that, she goes up to 12. Five double-digit scores today for the Mustangs. And that kind of balance could go a long way as they try to make a statement in 2A. Savala blocked by Jarnett. Stripped, I should say. It won't matter. The Mustangs will extend their winning streak to 10 and pick up a win over their friendly rival. Perhaps their biggest win of the year. That's the fifth foul on Mary Burke, so she will go out of the game, finish with 31. She scored 2,000 and has a few more games to pad those numbers, but the day belongs the Maranatha Christian Academy Mustangs. Jarnett makes both, and that should be enough, more than enough. So 
at this rate, she would need to get 27 points on average in her next two games to get 2,000 against Mediota. Overby, Jarnik got a block. Maranatha, gonna have to go to run out the clock here. They don't need to do anything more. We'll let the applause do the talking. Desiree Ware has a chance to add to her numbers. A brilliant effort by the Mustangs. A gritty comeback attempt by the Rangers. Like we said, I think the biggest disappointment is that we won't get a rematch this year. We'll have to wait until the next reclassification in 2019. Ware goes up to 12. And that'll do it. Maranatha wins their 10th straight and beats Martin Iron Buell in the 2018 rendition of this rivalry, 80 to 70 the final. Mary Burke, the game high with 31, five players in double digits for the Mustangs led by Jacqueline Jarnett with 20. All in all, a fun rivalry. Maranatha won this one. Like I said, it's a shame we won't get a rematch, but this is why this rivalry has become one of the most storied in high school girls who. So we'll try to get a word with a couple of the players before we wrap this up. You're watching high school girls basketball. Maranatha beats Mountain Iron Buell 80 to 70. And I'm joined by Jacqueline Jarnett of Maranatha and Mary Burke of Mountain Iron Buell. Uh, is intense and down to the wire like this one? Um, I'll miss it a lot because we played against about nine like the whole time I, we've been in 1A so it's sad we moved up to 2A but it's really fun and I cherish like all the memories that comes with it. And kind of a friendly rivalry I noted the coaches were having a laugh beforehand with each other you know what makes this rivalry stand out from other ones? Um, I think we just have so many pl talented players on each team and we just match up really well so yeah. And uh, your opponent there across the 2,000 mark, I know you like to get there soon, but uh, do, how does someone like Mary make it uh, difficult for you to execute on defense because uh, she had 31, so she did not make it easy for you? Yeah, she's very aggressive on offense as so she gets to the rack, and she doesn't let anyone stop her, so she's very talented. Um, how would you say you've stepped up leadership this year because you're a senior, and as we saw today, and as your coach has noted, uh, you're capable of stuffing any stat line, whether it's points, rebounds. I think you got some steals, dimes. Uh, you were doing it all out there. Yeah, I think I just as I've gotten older, I learned to, I've had to learn to step up and be a leader, especially senior year. So I think I've done that pretty well. Did you take any passing lessons from your sister? Um, definitely. I've learned a lot from her, and I miss playing with her, but I'm excited to play with her soon again. So yeah. I think all of us are uh, seeing the magic you two had a couple years ago. And so uh, with this, you pick up your 10th straight win. Uh, what are you looking to do as you move forward and start your first uh, playoff round in 2A? Um, I think we just have to keep doing what we're doing because we've, what we've been doing has been working. And I, we just have to keep working hard in practice. And yeah. All right, Mary, we'll go over to you here. And so, oh, we're going we're gonna to have the switch. <laughs> Uh, competitors, but they know how to switch it up here. So Mary, I know you got the sweep last year, came up a little bit short this year, but 
what memories will you take from this rivalry with Maranatha and being part of so many photo finishes? Well, um, I guess I would say that I'm going to miss how fast-paced the game is and how, like, um, we, we, like, kind of had a bond. Like, I don't know, we're friends, I guess you could say. Like, we know each other a lot, so I, like, I, like I'm like, i really going to miss that. Like we said, a friendly rivalry uh, because you, you two have played each other for so many times. Uh, what do you think happened in the second half? Were you able to get you were able to tie it up at halftime? Marinatha got the edge in the second half. What was the difference? Um, we just weren't getting back on the layups, and we just weren't grinding as hard as we should have been, and it just didn't work for us. So, that being said, uh, what are your thoughts on joining the 2,000 point club with a game like this? Um, it's great. I couldn't have done it with any of like without my teammates. So I definitely give the, all props to them. So. And what would you make of Mountain Iron Buell's sustained success? Because you, you crossed 2000, you know, you had some great mentors in Chelsea Mason, Maya Buffetta last year, and the Rangers known for producing a lot of talent up in the Iron Range. So how, have, how do you think this team stays competitive, and how do you think uh, what you've seen has fed into your success? Well, we're constantly pushing each other in practice, and we kind of try to go to as much shooting workouts and passing workouts as much as we possibly can. So. So how bummed are you that you're not going to get a rematch with Maranatha this year? Uh, it kind of sucks because we always look forward to getting back at state and then playing them, but it is what it is. So. Well, there is one bright side to you two in two different classes now. You can now cheer for each other when you get to state. You don't have to try to scout against each other this time around. Uh, but, you know, well-played game, it's one of those where you hate to see either team lose because you both go after it. Uh, before we wrap up, is there anyone you want to say hi to? Um, hi, Mom. <laughs> um, hi, Mom and Elena. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by. Again, well-played game. Congratulations on the accolades today, and I'm sure there will be more coming uh, your way for both of you as the season moves along. I know you're on the list of frontrunners for Miss Basketball, and I think it would be hard to ar argue against either one of you. Thank yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear the question. I'm just uh, saying congrats on a game, and you know, after a game like this, it'd be hard to uh, write either of you off that uh, short list for Miss Basketball. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, whatever happens, this is a well-played game, and I wish you success as uh, February moves along. So. Thank you. Thank you. That was Mary Burke and Jacqueline Jarnett. That wraps up our coverage here from Maranatha in Brooklyn Park. For our entire crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.